Hey, God bless you and welcome once again to your program, Too Blessed to Be Stressed. My name is David and her name is... Jahida. Welcome everyone. We want to thank you for watching us and listening to us. So we hope that you enjoy this program like I know I'm sure and 100% positive we will. Amen. Amen. So today we have an amazing show as always, but before we continue, we must first present the young lady, the daughter of God, who controls the knobs on Too Blessed to Be Stressed, and her name is Geraldine, a.k.a. Chinola Abreu. Thank you, Chinola. <laughs> I like Chinolas. Anyway... <laughs> We want to thank you guys for joining us on your program, Too Blessed to Be Stressed. And as you guys know, uh, the season, our theme is Blessed to Be a Blessing. So it is our prayer that as you watch the program, God would encourage you not only to be too blessed, you know, and not stressed, but to also bless other people as you yourself are being blessed through the program. Reach out to those that may not know Jesus. Reach out to those that may be going through a hard time, that may feel helpless and hopeless. And speaking about hope, what's today's theme, Jaida? Yes, we want to present uh, today's theme is hope. But I want you to explain it. Like, I know, but again, hope, and you have yeah, a word for each one. Yes, for each. Yes, an acronym, right? It's, yes. it's hold on patiently and expect. Amen. And if ever we needed to do that is in these times of hardship and yes. uh, problems going on. But don't you worry, because we have a great program today. And I want to present to you guys my good friend that will speak to us today about his journey of faith and how hope has been a secret ingredient that has helped him to hold on and patiently expect God to come through for him. He is a technical director for New York Mets Stadium City Fields, dad of two beautiful kids, caregiver of his mother, uh, and an amazing, an amazing man. I love this man. His name is Harry Garcia. Brother, how are you? Welcome. I'm well. I'm well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, Harry, um, before we continue, we always like to give the, the uh, guests a little bit of time to kind of present themselves and maybe talk a bit about, I don't know, what you like to do, just so that people can get a sense of who Harry is. Oh, okay. Well, uh, well, thanks again for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to share a little bit about myself. Um, I uh, started out uh, with an interest in music growing up, and that blossomed into... Uh, interests in theater and film and through my career I was able to uh, uh, develop uh, into a broadcast uh, technician which put me in the uh, arena of being in stadiums and uh, sports venues and in television control rooms and uh, you know I, I loved the creative and technical blend that evolved inside myself uh, throughout the years and um, those have been the, the things that have, for the most part, you know, uh, captured most of my attention and my, my time. And in those, in those arenas, I've, I've had the opportunity to work with really talented people who, for the most part, are, are never really seen on camera, right. but they bring a tremendous amount of uh, expertise and knowledge to uh, what we see and hear on TV and film. And that's always inspired me. You know, I've always you know, enjoyed being in the presence of people who you know, bring special skills, special talents, yeah. you know. You know, what's great about Harry, uh, Jahida, is that, you know, he's very, you know, humble and... Yeah, but, he, he didn't say anything yeah, about, but. you know, he <laughs> is, uh, at least what I know Harry, is an extremely inspiring musician. Yes. And I have to say it because that's where I know him best. Yes. Um, again, he <laughs> could play the best... Pipe. Pipe that I ever heard. <laughs> I, you know, again, until I met Harry, that's when I was like, oh... This is an instrument, you yes, know, yes. And, and this is how you play it, and that's how you inspired, and everyone that is around you is like, we want to hear you and just play, and just get, you know, mesmerized by just hearing you, so I'm like, I think you just like, you didn't say enough about how great of a musician, and I know how in love you are with music, so... That's I true. Am, like, That's true. That is my first love. Now, I'm talking about, about Harry, how he loves music, and um, 
you know, our experience has been with Harry and personally is that, you know, Harry is always a person to inspire. Uh, he wants to help people uh, achieve their goals. You know, Harry always says, you know, you can do more, uh, expect more. Uh, but in the process, things happen where we were like the tables have turned. And now we find ourselves saying, hmm, am I going to be able to continue playing the flute? Will I be able to continue to uh, theater and camera? Uh, I know that you also uh, love to run and lift weights and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a number of things. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, all those things came to a halt in your life. Mm -hmm. Would you speak to us, Harry, about what happened in your life that you just had to kind of like put all that to the back seat and you had to attend to an immediate, uh, um, I would say, uh, event in your life that kind of uh, put you on the sidelines and made you kind of rethink, I would say, your whole life in, one, in a sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, first let me, I didn't mean to short sell myself <laughs> with uh, music and exercise and working out and all the all things the that, and yeah, all those the interests he's, that I've he's had. He's a firefighter uh, type part-time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? That's a, that's a hot one. Uh, but um, yes, I mean, you know, uh, the makeup of my life uh, in large part um, had really passion for things. If something interested me and, and really piqued my curiosity. You know, I really went in it to get as much out of it as I could, and in the process, the learning that came from it, uh, you know, tapped into a part of me that also wanted to share the learning. So, you know, it's true, I, I always had much to say. I always had inspiring words of encouragement for people because of the processes that I went through in learning things and having success. Right. And that part of me, you know, I enjoyed so much that it, it you know, allowed me to, you know, become very successful at, at exercise and at music and at television. And I was going along with life, you know, pretty happy with that until I was, you know, suddenly stricken with cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the, the seminal moment in my life that you're referring to, you know, for the audience at home uh, that, you know, changed things. It put a stop on what was normal. It changed the routine and it, Quite honestly, you know, it, you know, taking the rug out from under you, so to speak, has a certain effect on everybody. And and for me, it was ironic that one of the healthiest people, by everyone else's account, right. certainly by my appearance and the dedication I had to training and to things I was interested in, this particular thing shows itself, and it just seemed like. Wow, of all the things that can happen to a person, how could this person, apparently one of the most healthy people that you could see, right. get stricken with such a serious illness? And, and, and that was impactful, not just to me, right. but to everyone who heard the news of this. Of course. So, so to answer your question, this, this was the thing. And um, you know, to elaborate a little bit more on how that you know, changed life, I, I think, you know, the first thing is, you know, having to let go of this physical experience mm -hmm. of the things I was able to accomplish, you know, uh, physically with exercise and with music. You know, exercise is, is really not the word for what I was doing, you know, <laughs> quite honestly, it's, it's, it understates it. Right, it was like training. It was, a, it, was, it was a personal passion I had with training to see right. if I could accomplish what an Olympic athlete accomplishes without being able to go to the Olympics, right. or to accomplish what an NFL player would accomplish without being able to play in the NFL, and so on and so on. And so I became creative with the challenges, and, and I would ramp up the routines so that I was accomplishing these goals that were, you know, measurably not the same as theirs, but as intense for me. And so, you know, that's a spiritual journey. Definitely. You know, it's inspired. You know, God speaks to you and says, you know, go down this road, do, do this, and, and let's see how you can sustain yourself through the hardship of what you want to accomplish. 
And you know, I was doing that. For how long were you, were you that intense uh, for sports? Uh, and working well, out. I would caution, it wasn't sports. <laughs> it was just because I wasn't out. playing, I didn't well, well, Working out, working out, your, working personal, out, your, your yeah. own little personal, uh, you know, grueling session. Uh, um, I would say, you know, through most of the 90s, and wow. uh, through most of the 90s, you know, learning slowly, of course, you know, right. like I, I started out not knowing and then learning and getting better and staying with it through the 90s. Right. Then when the 2000s came, I had, you know, I had the pleasure of uh, meeting a, a soccer coach for St. John's University. Okay. And uh, I got to sp spend some time seeing how they train Division One. You know, NCAA you're, you're like, soccer players. You're like, I'm not a soccer player, but I'm gonna train with them. <laughs> uh, yeah, because the guy challenged me. You know, he oh, challenged yeah. me because he, at the time, I was very, uh, you know, I was very strong from lifting weights, and I was physically, you know, big and powerful from lifting weights. But, you know, he was very smart. You know, the, the coaches know how to get into your psyche to accomplish things that you don't even know right. you can accomplish by challenging you in certain ways. And his challenge to me was. Oh, you'll never be able to run like a soccer player. You're too big. Right. <laughs> and so, so it, it made me say, what? I can't do what? And then I went at it. Right. And, and I learned slowly how to become a runner. Right, right. And, you know, and it was a great journey. It's just, you know, just a wonderful experience. So you're running, you're lifting, you're playing the flute, and then you get the phone call where you're diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. What type of cancer was it? Uh, it was a cancer in a lymph node, mm -hmm. and um, you know it had originated uh, in the in the back of my throat by my voice box, mm -hmm. and that was the primary site, and no symptoms. Wow. You know, uh, quite honestly, they said this could have been in you for 20 years, and um, you would have had no symptoms. It's only when it breaks through your defense system and it begins to move out through your body that physically a site shows up. You're not going to feel sick. You're not going to feel weak. You're not going to feel like there's something wrong. So, until I saw this lump on the side of my neck, you know, I didn't know that there was anything wrong. I didn't feel anything. So, uh, you know, it was a, a lymph node that was infected with cancer that had spread from my voice box, hmm. and it was on the move. Hmm. And at that point, you know, it's complicated because you have to be very aggressive with stopping it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where the challenge began. It was wow. understanding what I was about to go through. So I guess we're gonna stop right there, go to a break. Yeah. So when we come back, we're gonna talk about um, Harry's journey uh, with cancer and how in the midst of all the chaos, he kept hope alive. He kept on holding on patiently and expecting God to come through for him. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on your program, Too Blessed to be Stressed. And we're back with Harry and Too Blessed to be Stressed. And Harry, again, is talking to us about his journey, what has happened, and what he just learned, and how he understood this new lifestyle, new process, new things that you had to adjust, I'm sure. Um, in this case, I think it's very difficult to, again, go through treatment and, and still have that doubt in my mind. Am I going to be able to be the same after all this? So can you please just touch on how you dealt with that and, and then how the, what that process was? You know, uh, it's a great question. Um, I... Uh, was told when I was at the hospital and they were explaining the things that they were going to do to clear this problem up that um, I would have some negative effects from one of the treatments which was radiation and uh, because of the location of this cancer I had to have you know radiation that would affect my salivary glands, my taste, my teeth, um, you know, the way the muscles that control swallowing, all the things that you take for granted from a physiological application of what happens in your mouth were going to be affected. Mm -hmm. This was going to be, you know, 
the penultimate challenge for me because of the music, because I played the flute for so many years, because it's been a part of my life, and even though I don't do it you know, professionally, so to speak, you don't have to, you know, something yeah. that's a part of your life is a part of your life. And uh, I had to, at that moment, say, you know, Lord, I mean, it's one thing that I can't, I'm going to physically lose what I enjoyed with the exercising and the working out. It's another thing that if I won't be able to play this, my in the instrument, you know, the experience was that the p complications were growing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it was becoming clear to me that I had to understand something in order to be positive and move forward in life mm -hmm. with the challenge that was presented to me. And where the flute may have seemed like, wow, how are you going to survive not being able to play the flute? What really became apparent was like, listen, you're going to have to really spiritually understand that this is flesh. Mm -hmm. And this, this became the penultimate understanding that the time we have here is limited. Mm -hmm. yes. And that this thing of flesh is easily permeable. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you're, you're so localized in your feelings of your emotions and your body and all that. But when you get challenged with something that's going to take this away from you, the thing that makes you you is ultimately the thing that takes over. So what do I mean mm -hmm. by that? The Harry that's inside of this body. meat body, <laughs> this is a meat body. And that's what happened, quite honestly, with the issue of the flute. I understood that this was just a meat body. It was mm -hmm. a packaging. And that I'm in here. And you know they could do whatever they can to help the meat body, wherever we are in technology. But ultimately, its purpose is to end existing at a certain date. Right. And you hope that you get the date that's the longest. <laughs> right. <laughs> farther away. <laughs> farther away. But sometimes it's not like that. Mm -hmm. And so for all of us, including myself, the thing that became clear was that I am in here. And that I am not this, but mm -hmm. rather something else. Mm-hmm. And so I, I have to be very aware and not to be fearful because this process of us coming and going on this planet as God would see it fit has been going on for a long time. And there's nothing to fear and there's nothing to get so tight about mm -hmm. emotionally, even though you are but the deeper thing is that, you know, you're not meant to stay. Right. And anything, things are going to come. And for me, it was this thing. And for somebody else, it might be Something. scenario B right. or scenario C, whether it's through illness or through an accident or through whatever the, the catalyst is. Right. Yeah. I mean, but in your case, uh, the knowledge of the eternal made the temporal somewhat easier to bear with. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. And, and in a very real way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. The, because knowledge, you, you, the knowledge of, of saying, because again, when you are faced with this deterrent of, I may not make it till next year. Oh, but I have the knowledge of God's kingdom. So in a sense, the, you know, the foreknowledge of, of, of your existence, of not the fleshly one, but the spiritual one, knowing that you are a visitor here on earth. That's right. Right? That's helped, correct. Helped this whole, uh, and you know, um, maybe, a, I don't know, a storm mm -hmm. or a hiccup or a bump on the road. At, fir at first, of course, it's very eye-opening. Hmm. Got me some changes here. Mm -hmm. But later on, the spiritual kind of kicks in and says, Harry, don't forget, this is not... You know, you work it out and you take care of it. That's great, and you should do it. But ultimately, don't get a cavity. You know, <laughs> because that'll be very serious. Ultimately, you know, God has a better place for you, Amen. and um, and that's a good thing that people should know. You know, uh, when mm -hmm. you see knowing that there is something better, then you can hold on patiently and expect. Mm -hmm. How does a person who doesn't know that something better is on the way hold on patiently? 
well said. And you know, people have different journeys with this particular um, body of knowledge in the human experience. Right. Um, we're blessed to have a spiritual foundation that allows us to have this conversation and to share it with other people and to be in communication with this thing. Yes. But your point is well taken that there are many people who do not arrive here the way we do. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Uh, they have no even understanding of any of this until until know, things it, happen. It, it comes to that I mean, in a different way. Let's talk about very briefly about your cousin and yourself. I, I know that she was also going through her journey with cancer. Mm -hmm. um, how did that happen and um, what happened in the interim? Um, I know that uh, she, she, she's not here uh, with us any, any longer. Mm -hmm. How did that affect you? Um, because I know that you guys used to like kind of encourage each other and, mm -hmm. you know, stick it out and it's going to be okay. And Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it, and thank you for bringing that to the conversation. You know, Priscilla, uh, my cousin Priscilla Perez, she had uh, stomach cancer at the same time that I was dealing with the cancer in my throat. And we would see each other at the hospital. And, um, yes, it was both of us encouraging each other and kind of in in many instances looking at each other and going you know what's going on right how is it possible that we both have cancer and uh, she was 51 and you know i was 49 at the time so very close in age grew right. up here in new york and not two very similar kind of lifestyles you know work family that right. kind of thing and um you know she didn't make it you know and i did and uh it deepened the understanding that you know this process is ongoing and that you know the the flesh fails and mm. my family you know they were devastated because uh we were the kids right you know of course you know we're older now but still your still. aunts your uncles everybody yeah, there who are still around they still see you as the kids right. so they look down and they see the kids are getting sick mm -hmm. and two of the kids are sick and one as I've said in the past, one stayed and one left. Right, right. You know, and uh, it, it's um, really like a difficult thing to kind of come to terms with David. Right. You, and I, I could never make sense of why the two of us would come down at the same time right. and this scenario would unfold itself for our families. Mm. And, and, you know, I... I know that in some respects, part of me privately, I said, ooh, you slipped out the back door. You got out ahead of me. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> you know, and, and people would say, wow, well, you know, how can you say that? Right. You know, you're here, you're alive. But I had to understand, you know, in that moment with, uh, with both of us going through that, that, you know, um, we are in large part not in control. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it's not our job to try to be in control. And I think that when we try to be in control, that's when we really lose control. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing you said, Harry, that really kind of like touched uh, a spiritual fiber in my heart when you said uh, flesh fails. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the truth. Mm -hmm. When we put our trust on flesh, on fleshly, you know, things, mm -hmm. ultimately those things fail. Because they're not built to last forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're just not. They're just not built that way. Mm -hmm. They're just not built that way. We weren't speaking about the economy, right? And and the and the Dow and the stock market. You know, it's like, it's not built that way. I mean, it's time when it's strong, but there's time when it drops. Mm -hmm. And if you put your hope on money, then when it drops, you're gonna drop. When it plummets, you're gonna plummet. When it's not there, you won't be there, you know, because, and, you know, the great thing about you, Harry, and, and things that I've, I've kind of learned watching you is because, you know, people, he lost, what, like 30 pounds, 40 pounds? Yeah, I mean, there was 20, 30, then 40, then 50, then look 55. Look it just, I stopped eating for five months. And, I mean, God is working in you. You're back to work. Amen. You're, you're working at, you know, City Field, at, you know, Convention Center. Harry's back, you know. <laughs> one of the comments he Harry's made was, one of the comments he made was, you know, 
I'm going to be the first Kansas I ever to go to the Olympics. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but knowing Harry, when he says, I'm going to do it. We, we don't doubt it. He's going to do it. You know? <laughs> and you know, Harry, I always, when I speak to you, I always see, and I, never, I never met your father, mm -hmm. but I see his spirit in you. I see that, that do it. Don't, don't be talking about it. That's right. If you're going to do it, you better do it. That's right. Because I don't want to talk about here. You're going to go do it. You go out there and you go to the Olympics, okay? Yeah. Stop talking about the Olympics. Go. <laughs> he would always say, yeah. either you know what you're doing or you don't know what That's you're it. doing. <laughs> Be one, but not the other. Right. <laughs> I'm telling you, I haven't met this man, but it's amazing. <laughs> Whenever I talk to Harry, I just feel that. Well, the time has come to an end. Um, amazing conversation now Harry before we kind of like wrap it up if there's anyone out there right now going through an illness going through um, anything at all where they feel tempted to uh, to lose hope what would you tell them I would tell them that um, those are the fires that actually bring life mm. into your soul not your flesh mm. and until you experience those things in your spirit you're truly not uh, complete in your making. You're being molded, you're being made. And the, the challenge at the moment, it is scary. And the emotions are real. But we have to go through these things. It's part of our story. It's part of our spiritual evolution. Yeah. And without that, we're not complete. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, we just want to thank you, Harry, for being here. I know you have a busy life still and that you are all over. Um, again, trying to get back into your routines. But we pray to God that he continues giving you that strength, that hope, that love for whatever it is that you're doing or planning on doing in the near future and far future. Um, so please, and we hope that keep healthy and that you do and accomplish all the dreams that you have. So thank you so much. Thank well, you. thank you Harry so much. Love you brother. Thank you, love you too. Well, thank you so much, my two blessed to be stressed audience. Today we spoke about holding on patiently and expecting. No matter what you're going through, remember the flesh fails, but the spirit endures forever. Put your eyes on Jesus. And if you do, then you can truly, truly say, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Peace.